why I'm making this. Does anybody have any questions on uh, what I've already talked about? Yes. Yeah, it's basically the, the same points you made on the zucchini you made on the Exactly. Yep. Um Why do I um if you take a regular bell pepper and it, and if you don't cook it, the actual the internal uh lining of the bell pepper is your body actually can't digest that. Uh it it takes a while for your body to go through your system. Uh, so if you're able to cook those uh, bell peppers, it's a lot easier for your body to digest. The reason why I would, I would put it over flame and cook the skin off, uh, one is to make it more palatable. For, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the skin of the bell pepper. It's kind of really doesn't serve any purpose as far as flavor wise. And for mouth feel, if you're able to take that off, it's a lot better in your mouth. It feels better. Um, and then the smokiness from the flame actually sends a tremendous amount more flavor into that pepper. Um, and the ones that you buy in the jar or if you buy in a can are usually packed in a vinegar or a, a seasoned water. And it kind of, kind of ruins the flavor, of, in my opinion. So that's, that's basically why I would like that. Uh, How did you do that again? If you have a gas stove, you don't. Or if you have a grill, what you can do is just oil up the uh, pepper a little bit. You put a little salt and pepper on there, uh, and then you want to put it over the flame. And as the flame comes up, it'll char all the skin and make it all black. You want to basically the whole pepper to become black. And at which point you can take it off the grill and put it in a, a, a mixing bowl or, like I said, a plastic bag and make sure it's sealed tightly. And what happens is the internal part of the pepper is almost to a boiling point because the whole skin was charred, and it just basically steams itself. So, and it also reduces the flavors because it's a, it's a high heat uh, cooking process. So it doesn't, it's not like steaming where it's just going to basically taste like blah. It's going to reduce the flavors and make it more intense for when it goes hits your mouth. Yeah. Probably about you can leave it in there for up to like 15 minutes. When you say reduce the flavor, yeah, reduce. Um, basically, if when you have a pot of water and you have it on the stove and it starts to boil, that steam that comes up is basically the, the water that's leaving the pan. So that's the same thing when it happens in a cooking process of a vegetable is when you're using a high heat, such as a grill or a flame, it's releasing water from that vegetable, which is intensifying the flavors of that food. When you said reduce the flavor, I thought, no, you mean increase the flavor. Right, it increases the flavor, it reduces the, the water content of the vegetable. Okay. So here I'll, I have uh, added my vegetables. some fresh herbs, and the pistachios I like to add, it gives it a nice crunch, and then uh, the nuts are also uh, create a, a good flavor along with the uh, quinoa, the nice earthy flavors, and they, they really mix together very well. My thought on organic foods, I believe that if you have to peel it, um, that it's not so important to buy organic. Like if you're, if you're talking about vegetables, zucchini and squash, these are organic. If you're going to eat the flesh of the vegetable, I highly suggest buying organic. Uh, but it, like such as a watermelon or a cantaloupe, where you're going to peel the skin off, anything that was exposed to the dirt or to the the chemicals that were being used. If you're going to take off all those layers, then you don't, really don't need to buy organic, in my opinion. Um, but as far as eating the flesh, apples, zucchini, squash, any of those, I would suggest. Does that answer your question? Don't buy GMO corn. Buy what? Don't buy GMO corn. What's GMO corn? 
Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't want to try and stay away from that. But then there's also, they're coming out with some genetically modified things, such as with the heirloom tomatoes and uh, a lot of the different uh, vegetables that are coming out that still have very good vitamin content uh, as long as they're not cooked. Um, and they're not, they're genetically engineered. So they're not, they're still a good product. Um, but the natural corn, uh, I believe, I think that Jersey corn is the best. Uh, that is just uh, personal to me. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plate this up. I'm going to put some out there. I have some forks, plates, and, um, and napkins out there uh, for everybody to try. I have some business cards up here. Um, I do do, basically, if, they're, if you're on medical restriction for dietary, um, I do dietary planning and am able to come up with uh, menus and break that menu down into a shopping list that it make it very easy for you guys to go out and be able to adhere to the diet that your doctors have uh, prescribed for you. Um, I also do off-premise catering, so. Yes? Quick question about the roasted special corn. Yes. You don't put it in water before you put it in the 400 degree oven. Do you take off most of the, or when you buy it, you know, in the grocery store, it's mm -hmm. just got tons of the green leaves. Um, anything like at the silk or the, at the top, like if there's some like real stringy green leaves, you can pull those off, um, but they're not gonna they're not gonna catch on fire. It's basically just going to uh, wilt. And you don't put the corn in water a few minutes before you put it in there. You just put it in there like you did it. Yeah. Yeah. Just like that. And when you take it out, and you I mean you can smell it, and that's the it's the real unique thing about it is you, you can actually smell it permeate through your kitchen when it's done. And when you kind of squeeze it, and if it's a little bit, if it gives a little bit, that means it's done. If it's still hard, then you want to keep it in there for a little bit. So. Anyone else? I do. I do. Um, no, I do. Actually, uh, there's several people that I've done that for where I can go to their house. I'll plan uh, like two or three different meals. And then I'll go and I'll do a cooking lesson for each of those meals. Just, and that way, it plans them for three days out. So I can prep and have the meals ready to go. They can be, some of them for the following days will be partially cooked and they can just finish cooking them. Um, that way you can feed your family for the next three days and, and have a, uh, I'll bring all the recipes with me and show you exactly how to do it. So that's also available to you. So let me season this up a little bit more, um, and I will take this up. There are also um, a more radio iPod or podcast that Joe and I are planning on doing, which I'll be doing with a nutritionist from um, Piedmont Hospital. Uh, she'll be there to assist me with any of the nutritional questions and the aspects of what foods to use. Um, in different dietary situations as far as uh, diseases or um, say gluten-free ideas. Uh, so at any point in time, if you guys have any questions or any of that, you can go through and ask those questions through the Men's Health and Wellness um, website. So this recipe will also be placed on the Men's Health and Wellness website when this is um, aired through the, the podcast. So. so I believe this should be enough to cover everybody up there to have a taste. The quinoa is actually gluten free. It's a gluten-free product, a gluten-free whole grain. Um, so there are, it's very hard to be allergic, I believe, to that. I don't think that there's anything that will affect it. Um, anything else? No? All right, well, thank you all very much. I appreciate it. And I hope that you enjoy the rest of this program here.